So I want to talk about what's been happening in East Jerusalem over the last couple of days and weeks where Israel and their security forces have been continuing this campaign of violence to forcibly displace Palestinians from their homes. And um, I want to say this first and foremost before we get into the details of this ongoing story. It's still developing uh, and it's a pretty volatile situation. But I want to say this first and foremost because there's always going to be people who come in and they try to use this defense of saying, well, it's anti-Semitic if you criticize Israel. It's anti-Semitic if you criticize the government of Israel. And I think this argument is just completely ridiculous. It's the same as saying it's Islamophobic for me to criticize the government of Saudi Arabia for the human rights abuses that they are conducting. We should be able to criticize any government anywhere around the world if they are doing things that are worthy of criticism. And as you're going to see in this story, the government of Israel is absolutely guilty of doing some pretty horrific shit. So let's get into the latest of what's been happening in East Jerusalem. East Jerusalem. So as Al, Al Jazeera reported, several hundred riot gear clad Israeli police officers deployed to the Al-Aqsa Mosque on Friday night, where 70,000 Muslims had gathered at Islam's third holiest site for the last Friday prayer of Ramadan. Thousands of worshippers stayed to demonstrate against Israel's attempted expulsion of Palestinians from the neighborhoods of Sheikh Jarrah. So this story is surrounding these, this specific neighborhood as well as another one. Um, but this is an ongoing process. If you know anything about the his history of Israel and Palestine, this is what Palestine used to look like in the early 1900s. It was all of this land here. And then over time with laws that were put in place and with settlements that continued to expand, um, obviously that land has significantly shrunk to the point of where we're at roughly right now. This is a map from 2017, but you have the Gaza Strip here and you have the West Bank, which is Palestinian territory. And um, all of the rest of this has been displaced and is under Israeli control. And even Israel is expanding and has settlements scattered throughout the West Bank, etc. And so there's this flashpoint of contention in Jerusalem, where you have East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem. Israel is, you know, occupying East Jerusalem and has for many decades now, even though it's not supposed to be recognized as Israel's territory. Um, and so that's basically the situation, the flashpoint where this all came to fruition. So according to Al Jazeera, Israeli security forces opened fire on Palestinians at Al-Aqsa and throughout the city on Friday night, shooting people with rubber-coated steel bullets and using stun grenades on crowds that were armed with no more than shoes, chairs, and rocks. And of course, we had the Western media all throughout uh, the United States, at least from what I was seeing, is everybody reported this as it was a clash. It was a clash between Palestinians with chairs and rocks and the Israeli security forces that are fully kitted out in military-grade weapons and vehicles. So this bothers me, the way that they frame this. The Western media always frames this as a clash. It's not a clash, and anybody who's portraying it as such is doing a disservice. It's exactly the same shit that the U.S. media does here in the United States when there's a Black Lives Matter protest, and you have some people in the crowd who throw a couple water bottles or something, and then the police respond with tear gas and rubber bullets and violence, and somehow there's this false equivocation there that these are two equal sides coming to clash together when it's not that. It's state-sanctioned violence against civilians and that's really what this amounts to. They continue, the Palestinian Red Crescent Emergency Service said Saturday that at least 205 Palestinians had been injured, mostly from rubber-coated rounds and shrapnel from stun grenades. Of the wounded, 88 were hospitalized, including one victim who lost an eye, two with serious head trauma, and two with fractured jaws. This is what it looked like inside uh, the mosque that we're talking about when these security forces entered. <laughs> Right. So as you can see, obviously a pretty chaotic situation. I saw some stun grenades, uh, st stun grenades. I saw some potentially tear gas going off in there. This is in a mosque. Okay. This is in a mosque. So just to get a perspective, let's just real quick think about if this was not a mosque. Okay. If this was in a Catholic church or if this was in a Jewish synagogue, imagine if a group of Muslims 
okay, a group of, of Palestinian Muslims had ransacked and invaded with their security forces a synagogue or a Catholic church while people were in prayer. Think about how the Western media would be all up in arms about this, and deservingly so. But just because it's a mosque, somehow there's this big discrepancy and there's some sort of, you know, false equivocation going here that this wasn't a one-sided assault. It absolutely was. So continuing on here, just a little bit of the background as to why they're doing this, why these people are being displaced from their homes in these regions. According to media reports, and this is coming from a letter that was put forward by Marie Newman and Mark Pocan of the Progressive Caucus in Congress, they say... According to media reports, the Jerusalem municipality is planning to build a biblical theme park, Gan Hamalek, in Al Bustan neighborhood near the walls of the old city after it demolishes 100 properties, which are home to almost 1,500 Palestinians, 63% of whom are children. In the Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah, 169 residents, including 46 children from 12 different families, have received eviction notices so their homes can be occupied illegally by Israeli settlers. And from 1967 to 2017, Israel demolished an estimated 5,000 Palestinian homes in East Jerusalem, according to a report by the Land Research Center. According to Bet Salem, from 2018 to 2020, Israel demolished another 349 Palestinian homes in East Jerusalem. They continue on, noting that East Jerusalem is part of the West Bank and under international law. Israel is in military occupation of this territory, notwithstanding its illegal incorporation of East Jerusalem within the Jerusalem municipality and its subsequent illegal de jure uh, annexation of East Jerusalem. It points out also that Israel's obligation under the Fourth Geneva Convention to refrain from destroying Palestinian property while citing Article 8 of the International Criminal Court's Rome Statute, which states that extensive destruction and appropriation of property not justified by military necessity and carried out unlawfully and wantonly is a war crime. So in other words, what Israel is doing here is a war crime, okay? They are forcibly evicting people from their homes, whether it's through their uh, discriminatory court uh, practices or whether it's through literal violence. Um, these amount to what could potentially be called war crimes. Uh, so that's the situation that we have right here. They're not the only ones saying that. We had Human Rights Watch come out. This was on April 27th. This report was released. A threshold crossed Israeli authorities in the crimes of apartheid and prosecution, guilty of crimes against humanity, according to Human Rights Watch. And curiously, Joe Biden, as all of this is unfolding, right? This is from a couple months ago. He came out with this position, continuing on in Trump's footsteps. U.S. opposes... ICC war crimes probe citing support for Israel, they said they thought that an international criminal court investigation into Israel's war crimes would be unfair. And how would it be unfair? Well, it would be unfair because we know, again, under the International Crim Criminal Court Rome Statute, this would be a war crime. So by unfair in this circumstance, what the United States is saying, what the government of Israel is saying by saying that the International Criminal Court doesn't have any jurisdiction or shouldn't uh, have the ability to go and investigate war crimes, what they're saying is we know we committed war crimes and we don't want them to go in and point that out. That's what they're saying. This isn't complicated. So there's your perspective on that. We have Rashida Tlaib joining in here. A bunch of other politicians chimed in and gave their perspective on this. Too many are silent as... Uh, or dismissive as our U.S. tax dollars continue to be used for this kind of inhumanity. I am tired of people functioning from a place of fear rather than doing what's right because of the bullying by pro-Israeli lobbyists. This is apartheid, plain and simple. And she's absolutely right. And listen, it's going to take more than tweets to get something concrete done about this. So there are a couple things that we can do. One, we can support BDS. Two, and this is the more concrete one that progressives in Congress should be pushing for aggressively right now, is we have to condition aid to Israel. The United States gives billions of dollars a year to Israel in military aid and otherwise, and they use those funds, at least partially to some degree, to do the things that we are talking about right now, to commit human rights abuses against Palestinians, to uh, uh, form these illegal settlements in Palestinian territories. We have to condition U.S. aid to Israel on ending the illegal settlements and on halting any human rights abuses that are being done in the name of those illegal settlements or in the name of Israel as a government. So those are the things that we can do in a concrete way. We need to condition aid to Israel along those lines. And we also just have to keep speaking out about this because, again, if we stay silent, then this process just continues unabated, unchecked, and with the support, tepidly or otherwise, from the United States government.
So we have a responsibility as U.S. citizens to understand the situation that's going on in Palestine right now and to speak out for Palestinians who are being unfairly prosecuted um, by the government of Israel and to speak out on these things, to raise awareness for them, and then to take concrete action. Okay, so that's the bottom line. we got to take concrete action, condition aid to Israel. Um, it's absolutely unacceptable that we have a role in supporting what is recognized by virtually the rest of the world um, and by all of these other organizations as war crimes, as apartheid, um, as unfair prosecution and removal of Palestinians, what basically amounts to an ethnic cleansing. So if you don't like ethnic cleansing, which I'm guessing most of you guys don't, um, then let's get on the right side of this and let's show some support for Palestinians who are protesting right now and uh, ensure that these illegal settlements do not continue.